monitor. The moral liability has to do with that which governs and controls the souls of natural men. When God created natural man, natural man was given a conscience to govern his way. Some people's conscience are really uh, strong, other people's conscience are really weak. His conscience works. Everyone with a conscience knows this. Their conscience works through guilt and shame, self-reproach, remorse, regret, the need for penitence, the need for repentance, fear, doubt, insecurity, all the things that your conscience brings. How many understand the way a conscience worked? How many have ever felt guilty? I heard a well-known, well-respected, I was talking to a guy this week, he walked over to me, they're working in front of the house, and there was a guy that walked over that works for the state, and we got to talking, and then he started talking to me about church for some reason, and, and we, we got to talking about different things, and, and <clears throat> he was saying about this, this minister that he really likes, and it was this minister that I even wrote about that I, I was listening to just last week, and... Uh, this guy is very respected. And this, this man that I met was talking to me about how, re, how much he respected this minister. The minister is just a little older than I am. But I, Carol and I were sitting down one day and I turned him on just because I hadn't watched him since I, since I was young. I used to listen to him a lot because he does a lot on prophecy. And um, he's, he's a Pentecostal minister and he was teaching about false teachers bringing deception into church. How many have ever heard sermons on that? I mean, ever since I was a youngster in the church, I've heard about false teachers coming and bringing deception into the church. How many know that the devil will put out warnings when he's afraid of something coming through? Because he doesn't want you to understand it. <clears throat> when false teachers come, there's also going to be truth. And truth is a multitude of times what you've never heard. The majority. And so your soul will say, that's false teaching. <clears throat> so he's teaching that there's false teachers coming. And his warning was that there were men preaching that the blood of Jesus was enough to purge all sin from past, present, and future. And he said that's very deceptive. He said, when you start believing, and this man I used to have a lot of respect for. It's not that I don't, I just... That just He said the blood of Jesus will not purge your sin, past, present, and future. It's good for the past, and it's okay for the present, but there's no power in your future. You have to continually, you know, cry out to God. He said that this belief, and this was his reason, it deletes the need for repentance. How many know that God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge? His point was that Jesus' blood will cleanse me from all sin, but only if I say I'm sorry, which he thought repentance was. He said that deletes all the people at the altar crying out and saying how sorry they are. So the blood of Jesus, I didn't know this until this point. How many know it would be? So the blood of Jesus works together with guilt and an apology or some expression of regret. Outside of that combination, I didn't know it's nothing but the blood of Jesus combined with guilt and apology will wash away my sin. So the blood of Jesus wasn't powerful enough. It had to be combined with guilt. How many know that just doesn't even sit well? The natural way and the carnal way are nothing like the spiritual way. You understand that, right? The natural way of natural man and the carnal way of the carnal believer are nothing like the spiritual way. The water believer has nothing in common with... How many know a baby in utero has nothing in common with the baby in the air? 
How many know it's a whole new world? How many know anything about biology? <clears throat> They're nothing alike and they don't mix. Truth, Jesus said, makes you free or exempt from mortal liability. Is the natural man mortal or immortal? Nobody wants to answer that. <laughs> How many know of anybody that has lived forever so far? How many know of a 10,000 year old person? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> so if you don't know anybody that's lived since 10,000 years ago, that makes men what? Mortal or immortal? Very good. More. This isn't tricky. I'm just trying to get you. So natural man is mortal. You believe that? Was pre-fall Adam mortal or immortal? He was immortal, wasn't he? Before the fall, Adam was mortal. Or was immortal. After the fall, he became mortal. God says, and now because of this, now he can die. How many believe that? God said death began to work when Adam, on Adam and whatever. Whenever he fell. Immortal, ready, made Adam exempt from all mortal liability. A spiritual, how many know if Jesus wouldn't have come and laid his life down, he could have died, he would still be alive. He was immortal, wasn't he? He was exempt from all mortal liability. Look at Genesis 2, 23. Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. Adam was absolutely spiritually functioning and completely devoid of a conscience. Adam had no conscience. How many know that? The Bible says that he was not ashamed. There was no shame. There was no guilt. There was no condemnation. There was nothing that, to steer his uh, Conscience. He didn't have a conscience. He was void of that. So he had no outside control outside of the Spirit of God. The only thing that controlled Adam's life was the Spirit of God. Do you believe that? It's absolutely true, isn't it? That's truth. Truth was all that Adam knew from the mouth of God. And truth made Adam exempt. The church doesn't understand kingdom truth. Because of that, the church is not obtained free. <clears throat> we used to sing a song, He Set Me Free. Yeah, He Set Me Free. How many understand that this thought is misleading? God forgave you of your past sin. Is that true? How many have ever sinned? I don't even have to look up. <laughs> so we said, he set me free, but the thought's misleading. Why? God forgave you of your past sin, but as soon as you commit sin again, you're once again incarcerated in guilt's prison. How many have ever sinned and you felt guilt? And all of a sudden, how many understand that guilt is a prison? Something has to happen, doesn't it, in order for guilt to go away. Something has to happen. You've got to apologize or do some kind of penitence or, or offer up doves and goats or whatever. You've got to do something to get the burden off, don't you? You've got to pay somebody back. So if you sin, how many have ever sinned recently? You, you Christian sins. I understand you don't do non-Christian sins. <laughs> How many still do Christian sins now? <laughs> and, and you feel bad, don't you? You feel bad right away. As soon as you do a Christian sin, you feel bad. <laughs> I should write a book called that, Christian Sins. <clears throat> Yo, listen to them. So, <laughs> so all of a sudden, you feel bad, and what happens? You feel like you're incarcerated in a prison of guilt, don't you? It's true. Is that freedom? There's no freedom in that. Is there? There's no freedom. Galatians 5. It's 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. You're fallen from grace. This is really a powerful verse. Paul mentions liberty in verse 1. Whenever he said, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. It's the same word that Jesus used when he said that understanding truth will set you free. It means you're exempt from the mortal liability from your conscience. Liberty is exemption. Liberty makes you exempt. How many like that thought? How many would like to be tax exempt? <laughs> How many would like to be speed limit? Wouldn't that be better? <laughs> what freedom would there be if you were speed limit exempt? How many ever drive along and see a cop and you hit the brake even if you're not speed? <laughs> speed up. I hope so. I am what I am. <laughs> Liberty is exemption from mortal liability. So Paul's warning the church not to be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. This was a warning from Paul. God had told Paul this. He said, you better watch the church is desperately attempting to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. How many know that Paul's preaching and teaching didn't help the church because he kept telling them, you need to watch how your sin life is. <clears throat> he says, don't be entangled in the yoke of bondage. The word do not be entangled means do not reoccupy a vacated position. You've come into the place of freedom, exemption from sin. Don't reoccupy. Don't reoccupy the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage was placed on fallen Adam. When Adam fell, he was given the yoke of bondage. How many have ever known the weight of sin and the weight of guilt? How many literally have felt the weight of guilt? It's a weight, isn't it? That's what Paul's talking about. He said, don't be entangled with, with this yoke. Don't let come under this yoke of bondage, this weight of guilt. How many have ever had their conscience weigh heavy on them? This was the yoke of bondage that was given to Adam. This is good. I don't know why I got tipped to the word bondage means you become a slave to something or you become a servant to something how many have ever felt like you were a servant to your conscience how many have ever even thought of it that way how many of your conscience has ever forced you to do something forced you to apologize to <laughs> when we think about the fall of Adam, we always consider it as a fall into sin, don't we? How many have ever heard that Adam fell into sin? It literally wasn't that. Adam fell from grace. It wasn't like falling into sin. He fell from. He fell from grace. So we think Adam fell out of favor with God. But again, that's not an accurate thought. Because we've always looked at grace as favor with God. It's more accurate to say that Adam forfeited his position of divine influence in governing natural man. When Adam fell from grace, he actually fell from a position of government. Adam was the governor over the natural realm. This is what Paul's talking about in Galatians 5. Like Adam, we've become a slave, not to sin as those committing the act, but to the conscience and its perpetual awareness of good and evil. It's not like you're a slave to sin, like you're, 
you can't quit smoking or drinking or, or whatever, you know, whatever you consider this your sin or the sin or sin. It's not like you're in bondage to the sin and the act of sin, but you're in bondage to your conscience, which gives you a perpetual awareness of good and evil. How many know if you were exempt from, from speeding, you wouldn't even have to have a speed on your vehicle? You just could pedal in the metal everywhere you went. <laughs> You wouldn't even have an awareness, would you? How many would like to be exempt from gaining weight? <laughs> you could eat. Yeah. Now that's the exemption. Right? <laughs> I made dinner this week and I made this big beef roast with 